Take a moment to think about the most famous street photography cities, or even where many famous street photographers spend the majority of their lives making work. And that list is pretty short. You have New York, Chicago, maybe some parts of California, London. I'm sure I'm missing a few, but you get the picture. For anyone who's been to New York or Chicago especially, in the hearts of these cities, there's vast amounts of people, interesting personalities all over the place. And due to the sheer density of the environments, compositions that are often full of action and movement. But what about those of us who live in places that aren't as renowned? Cities that aren't as crowded, places where we can't shield ourselves in the masses, or have frequent guarantees of full frames. Let's not look at smaller cities as doom sentences. What are some of the ways that we can maximize the qualities of smaller cities and still create strong images? Today, I present to you street photography in cities not named New York or Chicago. For those who don't know, I live in a town right outside of downtown Cleveland, which is where I mainly do all of my street photography. And though the population of Cleveland as a whole is about 378,000, the population of downtown Cleveland is only about 14,000. I completely embrace and understand that the only way I will ever get photos like this or this is either after a play let out at the theater or if there is a sporting event people are walking to or from. You have to know your city's patterns. That way, I can find not only more stability amongst the people I photograph, but I won't be aimlessly wandering down the streets and getting frustrated when I don't see a single soul for six blocks. What are the common public meeting places of your city? Are there certain areas where there's constantly movement or places where people like to lounge and relax? Since we live in smaller cities, we really have to get to know where we are. You need to know the times that the most people are walking to destinations, the popular times of the weekends that people like to get out and go for things like lunch or events, and where people often like to kick it and just be still. I know the times during the weekdays where the people are walking to and from work, the most popular local places where people like to get lunch, the times where the popular lounging areas have the most people, and even the common side streets that people like to cut through. Take some time to just walk around and pay attention. Go out at different times and don't even focus on making good photographs of this experiment. Pay attention to people's habits, where the majority of them seem to be, and take note of it over an extended period of time. People always emphasize the story aspect of street photography, which I think is a good thing. So tell the story of your city. If you truly want to emphasize the human element of your photographs, you have to know where the humans are and when they're there. But once you do that, don't be afraid to take a more engaged approach in your photography. The popular, in my opinion, misconception that street photography has to be completely about candid, unaware people, but you can literally take a photograph on the street, the street photograph that doesn't have a single person in it, or one where you can directly interact with an individual and no longer have it be candid. Another misconception is that the only way you can tell a story is relative to an unaware person in a frame. And that's also not true. There's so many aspects of street photography that don't require layering, unaware subject matter, and people at all. And this might be something that you have to emphasize. To me, photographs taken on the street are street photographs. It is street photography, plain and simple. As I've grown as a photographer, I've leaned into experimenting more with hard light and simply photographing the buildings and areas that make Cleveland, Cleveland. The style of your city's buildings tell a story. The way the light hits in certain shapes tells a story. Countless things that aren't people doing random stuff can tell stories. So ignore Reddit, ignore the gatekeepers, get on your Helios vibe and understand where the sunlight is strong and pay attention to the shapes that it makes. If someone genuinely looks interesting, don't hesitate to speak to them and after a while ask to make a portrait. But don't make it about just the portrait. Get to know them as well. I promise you that so many people feel unseen and unimportant in their everyday life. And some of the most fulfilling interactions and serendipitous adventures I've ever had have come from me simply going up and talking to someone who I thought looked interesting. But the further you move into this, over time, you should consider creating a body of work out of your photographs. If your city is truly that small, take the time to understand that for every you that has been interested in pushing through the challenge to document where you live, there's probably been hundreds of other photographers over the years 
who made excuses on why they can't do the same thing. Understand that you're in the unique position to bring a skilled understanding of what on a visual, human, and artistic level makes your city your city. Try to come up with an overarching theme to your work over time for a photo story that you can tell through your images. This is no disrespect to New York or Chicago, but we've been seeing these cities for almost 100 years now. They're extremely interesting, ever-changing, and essential to what makes the US the US. But I personally have no idea what's going on in really any other city in the country as far as street photography goes. The grand majority of people in their day-to-day -day life feel invisible. And because of people like us street photographers, people can feel seen, they can feel important, and the places that we live begin to be characterized in an artistic light. If you can't name a significant street photographer from your city, I hate to break it to you, but it looks like it's you now. This isn't about becoming famous. This isn't about making a best-selling book. Make this simply about the idea that when you look back in X amount of years, you'll be able to have collections of stories about the people, places, and communities of where you live that nobody else took the time to capture. Street photography is completely random, so you likely won't be able to add pages to this story every single time you shoot. But over time, it'll come together and become something significant that you can put your name on. Larger cities will always have the benefit of volume, but smaller cities, in my mind, have the advantage of intimacy and being able to take a slower, deeper look into things. Don't look at that as a reason why you can't tell visual stories, why you can't be a street photographer, or why you can't try at all. Go out there and show us, or maybe even show yourself, that you can make a story about where you live no matter how big or small that city is. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.